Okay, we're going to have our next presentation uh, from two presenters of Ralph Hodgson and Dean Alamang. Uh, Ralph is one of the founders of Top Quadrant, uh, tools that you may know, Top Raid Maestro, Ralph. And Dean Alamang uh, is uh, a major, major contributor to the FIBO effort. He works as one of our uh, staff ontologists to help develop FIBO. And as you probably know, Dean has written uh, seminal work on ontology, uh, semantic web for the working ontologist. They're going to talk about how to uh, extend FIBO, and they're going to demonstrate and show that to us uh, via uh, what they can do with Top Quadrant. Thank you. So what we will present is something that will be in the manner of a play in some ways, in that I will turn to Dean at times and say, fiber has that interest, does it? Or it has that difficulty? Uh, I present myself both as a tool vendor and an ontologist in the field, busy with the banks, and busy with central banks as well as the banks, yeah? And I will be reporting on how our platforms and tools and approach to doing things like lineage and doing things like f helping researchers in the macroeconomics field find things, uh, I shall report on that. So there are two things to be covered in this presentation, but the gesture we will be making is one of confirming where the boundary of FIBO is and how what I'm doing is testing that boundary in some ways. Yeah? So on, on my part, I'm going to be quite literally wearing my FIBO hat in this <laughs> talk. So I'm representing FIBO in this little drama that we're doing. And so the world that I see FIBO in is that there's going to be a lot of folks out there like Ralph. These are either going to be vendors, independent consultants, people working inside of banks or in institutions. They're going to be doing interesting projects in the financial world, possibly using semantic technology quite uh, intensely like Ralph is doing. And that's why this one's interesting. Or perhaps not so much so. I've had a lot of interesting breakfast talks uh, since I've come here talking about various technologies that are kind of semantic but not quite, but are nevertheless interesting. And FIBO should be able to uh, have an impact on them. And so uh, given that that's going to be happening out there in the wild, how does FIBO interact with these things and on the one hand provide value to people like Ralph and on the other hand get value back? And so in the little drama we're going to do, if this all works out well, because um, we may improvise <laughs> some stuff, it is me and Ralph after all, um, there's actually a nice little feedback loop there. Uh, I call it a gestalt. Yeah, it's a gestalt. It's like when you did object modeling, you yeah. want to make an instance diagram to test that your classes are right. Yeah. When you build an ontology, you want to see how it can be put to work. Yeah. And that gestalt is what we'll try to um, try articulate to a little bit, yeah. Uh, I was going to demonstrate things. And there is fiber running here on uh, Top Rate Edge. Uh, Top Rate Edge is our enterprise data governance product, all model driven. Uh, that's introduced here on this slide. And I was going to demonstrate the search over uh, macroeconomics. Uh, but you've but got that's, a booth, Ralph. People can we, come to, people can come to yeah. yeah. And I, I, I recommend it. He should have sure. today. So we introduce ourselves very quickly. Mm -hmm. Dean, the book. Uh, he also is a colleague from way back in the in the late, uh, actually 2002. We've known each other yeah. from that time. Yeah. And Top Quadrant, just to say one thing about it beyond the products is we're involved with technologies that uh, extend Sparkle, make Sparkle into a rules language, a constraint language, into, and the thing that is, I think, very key for fiber when it, certainly when we get involved with blockchain and we have to do uh, some kind of interoperability validation, the working group shapes at W3C, and, and the work we're doing on Shackle is going to be quite uh, significant. And, and I've, in, I've integrated a lot of that technology through Spin and, uh, and Shackle into a lot of the infrastructure of FIBO. And in some of the connections here, we're going to be showing that off. Both Ralph and I are pretty excited yeah. about that technology and where it's going. Shackle is saying, if, you want to have, if you're going to have this property of this value, you're going to have to have this other property. So it's defining the payload that's going on between things. That's one of its use cases. 
Okay. So, Rob, what have you been up? So, two <laughs> challenges that I wanted to address. The second one, we're not going to we're going to run out of time. So, the first one is about how do we use semantic technology to improve search over documents, in particular financial and macroeconomic documents. And you're going to see how we've taken something like two and a half thousand documents from the Federal Reserve Board from the European Central Bank, from the Bank of England, and we've um, used order classification and machine so, learning to do so that. Stop press, Ralph. Um, yeah. the, just this morning, I had breakfast with somebody from the New York Fed, yeah, um, who was saying that she has exactly this problem. And so she's on her way to your booth this afternoon. Oh, okay. Make sure you're ready for her. Uh, but I told her to come to this talk, and she is in the audience. And yeah. she has the same problem that your European Fed has. And so I think she'll be very okay. interested to see what you've got. Great. Thanks for that. And uh, the second use case is how do we connect lineage models of the kind that banks have to do for their stress reports to specific assets, to trading situations, to reporting needs that are spelled out in the compliance documents. So the, because I'm not going to be able to speak to that too much, uh, I've included the slides and, and they'll get into how do you take a document and ontologize it and then and discover what kind of assets it's dealing with. And uh, as I say, we're going to run out of time, so we're not going to get into that second one too much. So let's focus on the first one. And here we make the point that this world that you're in with FIBO is so rich in terminology that you have to kind of work that just as rigorously as the ontologies. But where does the terminology come from and what does it mean to work that rigorously? And it comes down to things like alternative labels, alternative terms, and being able to distinguish things in, in hierarchies as well as in an ontological sense. So we'll see more of that as we get into this. Um, the second bullet it expresses that objective. And the third bullet talks about how we want to use ontologies to go beyond just taxonomical relationships into other uh, distinct meanings and, and, and see how that improves research. We didn't want to start from nowhere, so we went and looked for where do we find SCOS vocabularies, um, of course, barons and places like that. But you'll see on a slide that follows how we were able to go from those glossaries into taxonomies. And, uh, but how well do they serve the need is something that we had to work with our technology, with the, the um, auto classification that we do in Edge. We were able to uh, train a number of documents to see the, the benefit of the alternative terms, and that's something we'll uh, be touching on later. Uh, we know, Dean, we, 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 when we talked, that we kind of had some common ground here on, on, on those vocabularies, and we'll see how that, uh, we get a chance to talk about that later. Yeah? A lot of transformation was involved in taking these vocabularies into, in, in, into the models we needed. There's over 7,000 terms now in our MAKO vocabulary, MAKO, M-A-E-C-O, yeah? So when we looked for these things, uh, and this is where Dean and I will in interact a little bit more to get clear on uh, why these things are positioned the way they are. On one axis at the bottom there, it's saying how ready this is in terms of being an RDF or SCOS representation. On the vertical axis, it's making a, a depiction of the terminology quality and richness. That's, in fact, I wanted to take the word quality out, yeah, Dean. Yes, well, you did. I yeah. think we're one, one version back on these slides. Because yes, these slides are one version slide. back. This, the, yeah. In the version that's on the web, we dropped the quality word and just had this as terminology. Right. And that, but actually, it's kind of fun to talk about this slide in terms of what changes we made to it. For instance, my FIBO teammates here are going to wonder why FIBO is sitting so low on the quality um, <laughs> spectrum, yeah. which um, I did as well. Now, when we actually outlined that spectrum in terms of richness, where by richness we need mean things like lots of alternative terms, things like multi-language things, and so on, that's not the effort that FIBO has been so involved in. However, when we talk, think about things like readiness in terms of have we actually poured over every explanation and made sure the explanation relates to the actual concept? Have we actually cross-referenced every definition back to Barron's, to Investopedia? Have we kept track of that link so that you can double-check our work? Have we made sure that we've punctuated it all in a consistent way yes. so when you look at different definitions, they all are playing the same role in your understanding? That's where FIBO has done a lot of work on this chart. And so, so in fact, in the 
one that uh, that we adjusted five, but it was very far to the right because yes. it's, um, it's, its curation has been very high. And it's about halfway up towards the richness and that we have not attempted to do multilingual. We've only brought in a few jurisdictions that are of high priority to us. We haven't done the things that, that ZEW has done where it's gone across an awful lot of different fields and cross-referenced different Z terminology. Yeah, ZDW, uh, isn't it right to say it's rich in its alternative labels? It's rich, certainly very rich in its uh, taxonomical Treatment, and, and in multilingual. Yeah. And multilingual, well. yeah. So um, the thing to know is that we, you should have the presentation version 10 that's on the web where FIBO appears much higher up. In fact, we dropped the top quadrant thing uh, yeah. because that uh, wasn't really the point of sh showing the slide that things were. I hope were... my build show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, I, hope, I hope so. If not, yeah. we might need to shift switch to your machine. Well, we could switch. Easily, I think. Yeah, well, we've only got 19 minutes. Let's, okay. let's, let's try with this. So uh, the, let's talk about the goal a little bit, because I think this is such a huge effort, FIBO, that it can't be down to just having a group of people that meet from the banks. There has to be some inclusivity. I've got 7,000 terms to give you, yes? How does that work? How do I give you my terms? In what form do I make that submission? What, what is the process what, for well, that? Well, that actually gets yes. the conflict on the next slide. And since we're yeah. running out of time, we'll yeah. move into that. So on, <clears throat> on this slide here, we make the um, d distinction between the terminology space and the ontology space. But to make that distinction isn't about focusing on how we build model. It's what we want to do with them, how we want to put them to work in the top of the picture. There are things that these, there, there are use cases. And the use cases are summarized in terms of these verbs. We, we want models in order to discover things, to, to give advice, to transform things, to integrate. And the last word there is to mediate, but it, it, it actually is to exchange. The, the slide is out of date, so we, 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 we have to tell you to look at the more recent slide, yeah? So now in the FIBO world, yeah. we've, we've experienced the same tension in that the FIBO activity is, for the most part, over there on well, the right-hand side as you're facing that. In this ontology space, FIBO is written in LDL. We do go to a lot of trouble to make sure that the logic is consistent and expressive. However, when we put FIBO out into the world, we find a lot of people are saying, I want a machine-readable data dictionary. I don't have the, the smarts inside of my organization to understand all this DL, or maybe a few of us do, but we, we don't get the penetration there. So there's an effort that Dennis has mentioned in a few of his talks, if you've been through all the FIBO ones, the FIBO vocabulary effort, where we're actually building things in the terminology space that correspond to what we've been doing in the ontology space. But now we get into the issue that Ralph was just talking about. He's not the first one who has come to us to say, I've got hundreds or even thousands of terms yes. that I would like to see reflected in FIBO. Many of these people are living entirely on the left-hand side of this diagram. In fact, from their point of view, they wonder why we're bothering on the right-hand <laughs> side of the diagram. They want to say, I've got some terms. Why don't you just pop them into the terminology space? And of course, we say, well, actually, we want to, did you see Sherry's talk yesterday? How many people here saw Sherry's talk yesterday? She's looking way beyond terminology. She's going to need something a lot richer than terminology to support that vision, mm -hmm. or the vision that David had this morning with blockchain as well. You're going to need something a lot richer than that. So while, yes, we want to be responsive to people on the left-hand side, we want them to participate, we want them to donate back, we're looking at sort of a longer game that Sherry and David have been talking about, and that's going to be over on the right-hand side. So one of the challenges the council has, you know, those of us who wear FIBO hats, <coughs> is how do we keep this stuff in sync? And it's quite a challenge. Ralph is facing it in his project, and FIBO is facing it in the industrial level. Okay. Uh, we could talk at length about this. and but let's, we get would, our, let's get to our we, demo. We, we would need to be sure of our demo, I think, first. Yeah. So there is a progression here from things that are live as glossaries into things that live as SCOS vocabularies. And I made the point earlier about having 7,000 terms in, in MAKO there uh, to, to organize and to relate to FIVO. And, and we, we will see some of that hopefully in the slides that follow. This is an example for swaps. Um, swaps get quite busy. <laughs> and this is a, the one we're featuring here is a cross-currency interest rate swap. Uh, what you see on the left is a taxonomical representation of that with the details shown in the, in the right pane. Yeah. Those terms, to put into context, you're using those terms at the moment to guide some machine learning things yeah. that will help you 
classify documents. The documents you're classifying are reports about those those instruments. Is that right? Okay. All right. So move forward to. Um, you there see how go. you see how this picture just as we flash by you go. see, you've got uh, fiber up there on the on the center axis, yeah, uh, and we right. arrive okay. here. All right, so <laughs> take the take the build back one now, so we get back into context. All right, so where we are at this point is Ralph's um, index that he's using to classify these documents that are basically reports about certain kinds of instruments. Now we have a look at this. He is classifying these swaps according to a lot of the terminology that he has found in his documents. But we notice the one we're looking at now, cross-currency interest rate swap. Now, if you do the build, we're now looking over into FIBO. This is so in we've switched into the ontology space now. And now we're in the ontology space. This is in some of the derivative sort of bleeding edge FIBO that's being used in a proof of concept, a proof of concept just before about the State Street proof of concept having to do with the structure of the swap. So the ontology is talking about what are the pieces of a swap and how do they relate to each other so mm -hmm. you could recognize them. So here we have a thing called a cross-currency interest rate swap contract which is very similar to the term that Ralph had over in his terminology space. Mm -hmm. Now, if we move forward from here, Ralph, FIBO is describing it in structural terms. So it's going to talk about the two legs, the features of the legs, and how they relate together. And I'll zip to the next slide, just give you a feeling for this. This is a particular swap yeah. up there at the top. It's got two legs. One leg is a floating, on the left is the, um, the floating one, on the right is the fixed one. If the figure were to get busier, you'd find out that they're both in the same currency. This is a swap with two legs. One is fixed, one is float. They're both in the same currency. What do you call such a critter? Well, we actually have a name for that in FIBO. That is actually, and if you do the next build, that is actually a fixed float single currency interest rate swap contract. It's a mouthful. But there's nothing in there that you don't already know. It's getting as bad as XBRL. Yeah. <laughs> now, what we, we've done in uh, FIBO, here I'm showing it in the open source world. We, we're using spin with some of the rules in FIBO to take this data and draw that conclusion. In the state three POC, you saw other technology doing this. The idea of FIBO, of course, it's, it's as technology neutral. As, um, as, as makes sense to be. And the, the graphics here are top grade from and top grade. And the graphics grade. here from top grade. So spin engine running in now, top grade. Now, here, here's the key point. If we look down at the bottom here, fixed float single currency interest rate swap contract. Ralph, do you have that in your sure. uh, vocabulary? Well, I have it uh, It's cross currency. I don't have but, the but fact that have, it's fixed and floating. But this, but this yeah, is a floating. new one. Yeah. So I, I need to put that back now. So yeah. here is the yeah. feedback. Yeah. So Ralph has some terminology. If I wanted to do research on these, these things, I could use his, his technology to find things at least all the way down to, well, what was it, the fixed uh, interest rate swaps. Yes. But now our structural no, cross currency swap. Yeah, yeah, cross currency swap. Interest rate swap. Our, um, POC says actually is a more detailed thing. Now we give this back to Ralph, and what will you do with it, Ralph? Well, I, I'll have it organized taxonomically, but I will re retain a reference to where it came from in FIBO. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, I, we have an ontology that lets us make uh, cross ontology references, uh, VAME it's called, and there, but there are other things we can do uh, in, the, uh, in the SCOS world, of course, to say related, but related is very coarse kind of property. We'd much rather have something more ontologically uh, complete about that relationship. Yeah? So that, that essentially it goes back, but we have to train, probably have to train our auto classifier again to get um, more results. And then we can run that over the uh, reports again. Yeah. So we have uh, that depicted a little bit here, except FIBO is not. I don't know the process by which I'm going to get a vocabulary from FIBO. Mm -hmm. That's something that I, I need to learn. I couldn't put five. Did I put FIBO in here anywhere? No, but no, it, it belongs. No. It belongs in this picture for sure. Yeah, we have Deardorff and we have the Bank of England stuff, and ZDW there. Yeah? So here was the demo that I don't have much time to show. You see three sources of data: the Federal Reserve Bank. Uh, we're working with one of these companies up there. We couldn't say which, so you have to guess. Uh, <laughs> prizes for which one will be given out later. But uh, European Central Bank and the Bank of England are there. Uh, what's going on here is a faceted search where we can uh, show results and click on and show the document. Yeah. Uh, if I were projecting on my machine, we could show this. This was done by having a training set. 
uh, there you see the training set. It, it, the research papers came in through RDFization RDF based on Tika. Tika is an Apache tool. This made its progression through our pipeline into our order classifier, which is based on uh, machine learning techniques. And then uh, we have to feed that with uh, a terminology. Here's an example of the terminology. So a new term, this is where it would come yes, in. Yes, it would come stage. in at this point, and, and then we can order classify these things. So you see terminology sources coming up there, and we see the European Central Bank coming in is another source there as well. So all this is happening with uh, top-rate EVN, but also top-rate EDGE uh, and is, is involved in the pipeline of this and uh, integrating the whole or, or orchestrating the whole thing. Yeah. Um, what we see in this next slide, Dean, is just how rich mm. these things become. Uh, these, this is a faceted search where you see terms on the left and terms on the right. The facets are actually coming from term, cl term class properties. It's possible to construct ontolog ontological um, distinctions here that allow the facets to show up properly. All kinds of things happen in the macroeconomics world that extend this into forecasting models like DSGE and uh, sticky price models and um, Bayesian models of various kinds, but there's also the need to do the simpler things of GNP and so, interest so, so rate. Ralph, and, in interest of time, yeah. I want to answer the question you asked earlier. And ah, this, by, by this having you take me to this slide, <laughs> okay. thank you. I, I had it in mind as well. Dean, yeah? <laughs> so so um, you said, well, how are we going to get the terminology back to you from FIBO? Yes. And this is part of the reason why we are doing a terminology effort inside of FIBO. And this is a very simple diagram. We have FIBO, the fund that, uh, that you know, my hat is about, that is an ontology in OWL. It's passed all the DL tests. We're very um, rigorous about that. Then we have the FIBO vocabulary effort, which is actually being implemented in SPIN. I like to, to plug Holger's technology whenever I can. That then automatically generates a thing that I um, photoshopped just yesterday to be called FIBO V and this little logo down here in the lower right. It's a rather clunky artistic logo. license, either, or is it real? Yeah, right. that's, a, that's a clunky one that I just put together. Okay. Uh, FIBO V is in the vocabulary from FIBO is being automatically generated. So when the State Street POC settles and the derivatives group uh, brings derivatives back into FIBO as a published version. That will come through to FIBO V, which is distributed to vendors like you uh, at the moment on our wiki, but we're have putting together some more um, automated mm -hmm. things for doing that. But that process is available, and that's why we make it available, so we can feed it back to vendors like you to increase uh, the value of your offerings. Yeah, well, it raises questions about validation process, accreditation. Mm -hmm. There are all kinds of things that happen in standardization. That's that, right. That and, and, and FIBO that's will have to attend to it. That's, for what, sure. that's what we attend to. Yeah, yeah. And that's why FIBO B is coming out in a very yeah. controlled process. So what we end with is that FIBO can be a vocabulary, just like we have ZDW. It and, can and it does have live like richness. this. Yes, and so here, yeah. here we're showing off FIBO V as a vocabulary. These are concepts that are related to one another in a broader, narrower structure. And so right. all of these terms are terms that have come from FIBO and have gone through the FIBO rigor, mm -hmm. to get back to your, your point about rigor, but they do have quite a bit of structure to them. And we're, we're down with, to our last minute with and a half. one minute, I will show one thing about lineage, <laughs> uh, how to take uh, contractual documents into an ontological form so that a lineage model of okay. the kind you see there, working with Oracle and big data and all, all these technologies that the banks have to be busy with to get a compliance report. I'm looking to have FIBO provide the richness of obligations, permissions, uh, prohibitions. M many more properties start to happen when you get into a compliance ontology. And I leave you with that future thought. Uh, I, uh, more than just the taxonomical world, we have something to contribute on the ontological world. Yeah. So with that, I shall end. And uh, we have 40 seconds yeah. for 40 seconds for questions. Yeah. <laughs>
the, the question is, um, did we use any of the ontological um, structures to guide the autoclassifier? The answer is yes. We uh, feed the MAUI with uh, customization that allows us to not only have the SCOS um, ontological constructs, but also our own ontologies that, that can guide or give more precision to relationships, basically. Yeah? Because so instead of cost related, we were able to say uh, identifies asset, yes, or terms like that, properties where we can make the asset connection, asset type connection, yeah. Second that, question. Mike. Uh, is the question can FIBO have the RICO ontology for, to, to consider for foundation work? of FIVO. I don't see any issue with that. Uh, I would want to uh, dis discuss this a little bit with Dean. Uh, when you search on the web for regulatory compliance ontology, there, is a, uh, there, there has been some effort there. And I would like to talk to the people that did that work to check what we've done, yes, and have that as part of it. That's the sort of effort that But I, I, I don't know the mechanism on, by which I would do that. Well, in, but I think we'll hear this later today on the governance process. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause to Elf and Dean.